Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, weather records and severe alerts, a yikes for mainstream news, and the top science stories as well. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last day still and calm. We have the polar confined coronal holes as usual at sunspot minimum, but we do not have the sunspot setup that is usual at the minimum. While solar flares have taken about a day off, they're just starting to tremble again. We have seen the breakdown and reformation of the lead active region with secondary spots worth monitoring today as the groups reach the center heliographic longitudes. We're also going to note solar wind dropping intensity this morning. It was a weak, short-lived coronal hole stream event. Let's take a look at the Doppler gram of the incoming sunspot pair. This view is neutral iron emission only and shows the Doppler motion spectrum for the solar surface. The right side of the sun is turning away from our perspective, left side turning in to face us, and we can always see these features in sunspots as well, except they do not follow the rotational Doppler in the local region, but overcomes it with its own motions. So in these sunspots we see the darkest crescents on the right side, the whitest on the trailing side of the sunspot away from us. These are the penumbral filaments the dark gray regions you see here surrounding the black cores of the sunspots, and they flow outward from the center fields piercing the photosphere, right hand rule there. So if they all move away from the center spot, that explains the brightness profile that disappears as the sunspots reach the center of the sun from our perspective, when the motions in the penumbra become relatively equal from our view. Just a little FYI about the Doppler gram. This earthquake was downgraded a notch from last night and is well below what this region can handle, but it is noteworthy that one of the users at QuakeWatch.net, Doc Barraza, who set solely Japan on alert five days before the event, nailed this one. Nicely done. Half of the current storm system in the U.S. right now is cold, downing some snow records not broken in more than a hundred years, at least one more day of that coming. Meanwhile, the other half of the storm is energetic, wet driven by mixing air masses along the eastern wind convergence, the lightning show last night appears to have been outstanding. The storms, and more importantly, the flooding, are set to continue, as even with each forming system traveling eastward, the formation events continue to hit the same south-central states. Eyes open for more tonight. The aesthetic moment of the morning comes from Phobos. Themis infrared shots of the full moon versus other periods shows the sunlight effect on the Martian moon's surface. Quick note on the length of the interplanetary magnetic field connections from Sun to Earth, which have been measured to be just a shade over 1 AU, as would be expected from the curving field, and which will allow for better high-energy particle storm forecasts whenever the Sun gets active again. We will have a well-written article up next from Cornell that will sting at any semblance of right that may still exist hidden deep within the ranks of mainstream media battling the fake news boogeyman they can't seem to stop summoning upon themselves. The problem, of course, is substance and the lack of it nowadays. When credibility of the source matters above all else, the paradigm shift in the media is working against them in the long run. Why was Honey Boo Boo the number one show on the Learning Channel for so long they changed their name to TLC? The Weather Channel was self-proclaimed weather entertainment and scrolling down on their website pages makes you feel like you're on Express or Daily Mail. When the news panders to the lowest common denominator, they foster this deficiency in their viewers instead of demanding more from their minds. And the eagerness to report shock news, ASAP, without diligent fact-checking, is now coming back to bite them. We've got two key space stories today. First is the support of ram pressure stripping studies of galaxies clearly undergoing something dramatic, turning them into jellyfish. Is it a colliding force or motion of the galaxy itself? Hopefully we're going to find out. Up next, we're going to Illustris and the Universal Simulations. It took hundreds of thousands of galaxies surveyed, within their model that is, and they have managed to recreate the no dark matter galaxies within the current cosmological paradigm, considered an amazing feat of physics. But the real test of a theory is how well it describes the observations of the cosmos, and in this case, we see a strong disagreement with early galaxy observations. Now, at this point, most reasonable people would keep trying so that something with even a remote chance of being real would be the work product, but to each their own, I suppose. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.